Well, hello there. <laughs> One of the questions that I frequently get asked on my channel, and I spend a lot of time answering these questions. So I thought I'd put this video together just to kind of give you guys a list of what I use and what I don't use, right? Not what I don't use, but what I use in order to create the music that I create. Now, for some of you, it'll probably be a good list and others will say, you know what? I don't need that. I don't need that. That's fine. But again, I spend a lot of time answering questions. So like I said, I put a list together and it's categorized, right? Whoa, organization. So the first one was, what do I use to create music? Well, of course, I have a Dell. Um, I have a Dell computer, right? Um, I forgot the name of the thing. Actually, it's, it's an older one, right? But it's running Windows 10, and I've got like 16 gigabit of RAM in it, right? Um, it's pretty good. It's actually pretty good. Matter of fact, it's so good, I'm afraid to upgrade. <laughs> but anyway, that's my main computer. It's a desktop computer. I just don't believe in doing it. So laptops, I I, I don't like doing it. You know, I just, I'm a big I'm a big desktop guy, probably because I'm old and I need that I need that extra space, right? But that's my computer. My main computer is a Dell. Um, the, I create music using either Band in the Box software because I create most of my music through software. At least, at least the majority of the music itself is through software. I may have some other things in there, right? But most of the music is created through software. And a lot of my music is created using Band in the Box software. And the other things that I use for creating music are loops. And the two sites I predominantly use is producerloops.com. And Big Fish Audio. They seem to have loops that I like, and their loops are royalty free, right? I'm a big royalty free loop guy. So that's where I get my loops from in putting my compositions together. Now, the DAW that I use, my DAW is Band Lab by Cakewalk. That is my DAW. Before that, I was a sonar guy, I was a Cakewalk guy, right? Then Band Lab came out. And it was just it was just such an easy transition for me. So my digital audio workstation, my DAW is Band Lab, as you can see pictured here. And Band Lab is free, 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 right? You can click on the link in this video, right? It will take you to Band Lab. You can download a free copy, right? Um, it's pretty good. But again, I'm so used to it. I know some of you guys use other DAWs, but I use Band Lab as my preferred DAW. Plugins. Now that's a long list. It can be a long list, right? So I'm just going to highlight some of the top ones that I use in creating music. One of my primary ones is the Isotope Nectar Suite. I have Isotope Nectar 2 Suite. And again, that's pictured here. And you can see what they have different combinations of multiple effects, which I really like so that I don't have to pull in a separate reverb and a separate delay and a separate compressor and things like that, even though I do a lot of that anyway. But Isotope Nectar is one of my go-tos. The next one um, for uh, my plugins would be um, Autotune. I, I use Antares Autotune in their, in their vocal production suite. I find it to be extremely valuable. Uh, Melodyne came with one of my earlier versions of Cakewalk, and, but I did a video before on why I like um, Autotune over Melodyne, whichever you, you know choose. You have to go with what you like, right? But I'm an Autotune fan. I like the fact that I can, it does my note corrections on the fly as I'm singing off key. <laughs> so so I'm big on that, right? So I use Autotune. Um, and again, and I use a, a ton of uh, Cakewalk plugins. They have so many. I, I don't want to list them all because they have so many, right? But their compressors and their delays and, you know, and some of their reverbs, um, some of their boost gains, right? I use those. So I use a lot of Cakewalk plugins. But my, again, my primary plugin is Isotope Nectar and the entire suite is what I use. My microphones. My primary microphone right now is a of sure sm7b that's the one that all the guys say was so great and actually it is pretty good you know so i use an sm7b but before that i use a sure sm58 and i used a sure pg42 usb when i was trying to go directly into my usb port it's a usb microphone pretty expensive you know i'm not even sure they sell a lot of them anymore they probably converted to a, a different version right but it's really a good heavy mic it's a good mic but again, I like this 7B. And I also have a standard, I'm sure, sure PG42 also that I created a lot of vocals on that mic. Again, it's like anything else, right? Things move forward in time. But it seemed like the SM58 series, the 57, the 58 series, they seem to never get old. People just love those mics. Um, again, and I have that, but primarily now I use a sure SM7B as pictured here. Now, hardware wise, my most important piece of hardware totally. Totally, and creating any music on a computer today is my Focusrite 
USB interface because we all know that creating recording inside of a computer the main thing you get is latency, right? And I we struggled all the time with latency, you know. And since once I went to the Focusrite brand of products, and this is not, I'm not praising, this is not a commercial endorsement for Focusrite. I'm just saying for me, once I went to the Focusrite line of products, and I use the soloist picture here, right? Because it's just me, right? Most of the time. So a solo is fine for me. But that interface to me has been an, an absolute godsend as far as me reducing latency and getting actually excellent recording. So I use that. And I do a lot of it through my through my headphones. And my headphones are my um, my Audio-Technica ATH-M30s, right? I like those headphones a lot. As a matter of fact, I've even resorted to starting to mix on headphones because I found out that, you know, I know you guys always telling me my bring it up 3 dB here, 3 dB here, there, you know. So I'm starting to mix more on headphones right now. I find the results are much, much better uh, than before. Um, now, other pieces of hardware that I use, right, is my, I use flat monitors, right, because I don't want any, any bass or nothing like that. So I use the Personas E3 flat monitors for my listening purposes, right, when I'm trying to do some mixing, right. They're pretty flat. You know, they're not very expensive. So I use those as flat monitors. Um, when I'm doing MIDI, if I'm if I'm actually recording MIDI sounds from a keyboard, I use an M Audio 49 key MIDI controller. I found out it works very very well with the system. I just plug it in directly into my USB port. Uh, Windows recognizes it, maps the keys out, and BandLab does an excellent job of recording the MIDI notes. So I use that a lot, and mainly I use it when I'm doing like string arrangements and things like that that are outside the normal realm of of the Band in the Box product. Now, if I've invited some some extra people over, <laughs> to, which I don't do a lot, right? But when I do that and they want they need to plug in and we're doing some recording, right? I will take an USB, my copy my tracks over into my Tascam DP32. It's got 32 tracks of recording, right? So I would take and put swap, move those over into my Tascam DP32 so that my friend Clarence who plays guitar, he can he can plug right in, right in. <laughs> Well, we can plug in a couple of microphones. And we can jam because we got 32 channels to do that with. Well, actually, what I do is I'll take a mix of the song that I created up to that point, copy it over, and I may use like four tracks of just the, pre the pre-recorded music, right? And now we can play our tracks over that, adding what we need to add, right? If he needs to add guitar, like I said, or whatever, you know, I use a Tascam DP32 for that, which has no latency. This is a, this is a great box, it, guys. This is a great box here, you know? And the nicest thing about it is that when we're done, I can take... And I can export the tracks in the DP32 as WAV files back over into my DAW and mix and match accordingly. And it's, that, that's great. I mean, that's absolutely great. So I use that. Um, again, a lot of you probably won't need something like that. But for me, especially, like I said, if I'm bringing the gang over and we're doing a couple of other things and needed to plug in, right? Instead of everybody trying to plug into some crazy USB port, right? We just plug directly into the Tascam DP32 and we are off and running. So that's basically what I use from a hardware perspective. People have asked me, uh, what do I do for videos, right? Um, I found that the Mavavi uh, video suite was easy to use. <laughs> I'm just not, I know that the, the Adobe Paint Shop Pro and all of those, right? They do a lot more. And I know that, but I'm, it's hard enough doing the music instead of trying to do the video too, you know? And I find the Mavavi video, which this actually, what you're looking at was made with the Mavavi video editor. I found it to be more than adequate for what I intend to do, what I try to do. And my webcam when, I'm, when you see me on, and I'm doing a tutorial, right, my webcam is a Logitech um, C0922, uh, and that's what I use, right? It, I, the mic could be better, but but at the same time, you know, we just use what we have and do the best we can with what we have. So basically, that is the equipment that I use to create my music and to create my videos. And again, if you look in the description of this video, you will see links to all of those products 
and especially the links to Amazon. If it's an Amazon link, like I said, full disclosure, if it's an Amazon link, right, then there's a possibility that I could earn a couple of peanuts, right, <laughs> and, uh, uh, if you purchase from there, right? But even if you don't, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter. I don't think it's going to change my life, but it doesn't really matter, right? But what it does, it gives you an idea of the type of equipment that I use to achieve the sound that I have. Now, whether you like my sound or not, that's another story. But the equipment stands, it stands on its own and sometimes in the hands of a better professional, right? And you, like you guys out there, you know, you probably make it sound even better than I can, okay? I will see you guys next time. Stay tuned to my channel. Keep up the comments, right? But again, I hope this addresses um, a lot of comments that I spent a lot of time answering on, you know, what do I use for X, whatever X is. Okay, I'll see you guys next time and bye.